Hello everyone, welcome to I'm Speed's presentation on Manneker's algorithm. Manneker's algorithm is a useful algorithm that's used to find the longest palindrome substring in any given string. But before we talk about that, let's first talk about what a palindrome is. A palindrome is any sequence of letters that when written in reverse is the same sequence of letters. Three examples of palindromes are Anna, race car, and even a nut for a jar of tuna. There are three main ways to approach finding the longest palindrome substring. The first way is brute force, where you use three nested for loops. The two outer loops find all possible substrings in the string, and the innermost loop figures out whether each substring is a palindrome or not. The largest palindrome is found and then returned. But this takes way too long and has a runtime of n cubed. A faster way is dynamic programming. It's too complex to cover in this presentation as we don't have time, but the gist of it is that it involves storing results of subproblems. It's faster than brute force with a runtime of n squared, but we can still do better. This presentation will focus on Manneker's algorithm, which is the fastest one so far as it has a linear runtime. Now let's take a look at our first example. String BA race car BA. We can see that the longest palindrome is actually race car. One of the things with the LPS algorithm, which is longest palindromic substring, is that it takes the string and transforms it into a new string by adding hashes or lines in between so that we would be able to consider the cases of even length palindromes. In the algorithm, we treat these lines as a string for example, a hash. So for each string, there's going to be an index which goes from 0 to n minus 1, totaling n indexes, and a position of length 2n plus 1. We're going to calculate the LPS of each position. If you look at the first position, which in this case is a vertical line on the string, we calculate it by comparing the two strings beside the center. We see that there is no string to compare on the left-hand side, so the length of the palindrome at position 0 is 0. Now let's take a look at the letter B, which is the second position of the string. Expanding onto the two sides of the letter, we see the two lines. So the LPS at this position is going to be 1. Hence, the algorithm that takes a time of n squared, we would need to calculate the longest palindromic substring at each of the 2n plus 1 positions from left to right, which takes a long time. Now, if you take, and this is a naive runtime. Now, if you take, the look at, take a look at the line that I just gave you, you can see that the pattern is 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, and also with the next line as well. This is called the symmetric property of palindromes, and Manneker's algorithm uses this property. Now, there are two rules to make sure that the symmetric property can be used accordingly. You have to know that these rules can only be applied if the right boundary of the center and the position that we're looking at, i is less than r, these two rules can be applied. Assuming that our string is in the state with the center at B, we find that it has a palindrome of length seven, the left-hand side is seven positions away from the center, and so is the case with the right-hand side. We need to calculate the length of the palindrome at I, and there's a mirror of I. Assume that the mirror has a palindrome of length of five. So the length of the mirror goes beyond the left-hand side, which is one, two, three, four, and five. This is beyond the left-hand side. So we're going to update the length of i equal to r minus i, which in this case is three. The other case is when the length of the mirror does not go beyond the left boundary. We can see that the mirror has a length of three, which is one, two, and three, and it does not go beyond the left boundary. So we set the length of the i equal to length of the mirror which is three in this case. And lastly, after we update the length accordingly, we expand beyond the minimum length, which in this case is three, and compare the characters B 
beyond that minimum length and find the length of the palindromic, palindromic substring at that center. The rules only apply if r is bigger than i. For example, in this one, the minimum length is 3. We start from here and we compare the characters here. This is 1, 2, 3, and we compare b to some character here. If it's b, then the length is actually bigger than 3. I'm going to demonstrate to you how this works. Assume I is the current character that we're looking at, R is the right boundary, and so I is actually bigger than R, so the rules cannot be applied, and we have to expand each time, one, two, and three, and we see that in this position, the palindromic substring length is actually three. Now let's take a look now, after that, we have to update the right-hand side boundary and the left-hand side boundary and the center. And we take a look at the next character. And the mirror of this character is actually here, which I just span. And this one, this mirror length, it does not go beyond the left-hand side. So it's going to be equal to zero and we're going to and after that, we're going to see if it can be expanded further. It cannot be. So it's left as zero. And so is the case with A. The mirror is one. And the minimum length will be one. We'll see if it can be expanded. R does not equal C. It cannot be expanded. So it is equal to one. And that is the case of how each of the one goes. For example, take a look at I, where E is the center of the palindromic substring with a length of 7, and R is updated to the length to the substring, and the center is E, and we take a look at the next character. We see that the mirror is 0. It does not go beyond the left-hand side. We let, let the minimum be 0, and we see if we can expand it further. It cannot be. And that is just how the algorithm continues until the end of the string. Now let's get to the code. We will divide the code to three parts. We will initialize the variables first. So we will use two random characters at the beginning and at the end so that our code works with the while loop inside the for loop and make sure that a hash or a line is in between all of the letters. And this is the length of the string. The length of the position at each center is initialized. And we set center equal to C, right boundary equal to R. In the for loop, we have the first if statement. If it's true, we can apply the two rules discussed, which is either setting the position of the length r equals r minus i or equal to the length of the mirror which is 2c minus i and taking a minimum of that and ex expanding the palindrome if possible if the two rules cannot be applied the loop goes straight to the while loop expanding to calculate the length of the palindrome and lastly and here we update the indexes of the center and r accordingly. And lastly, we find which position the longest palindrome, si palindrome center is at and its length. Hence, we return the longest palindrome. And the gist of it is that the program will loop over the entire string on a maximum of, tw on a maximum of twice. And so this is why the Banneker's algorithm is linear. Thank you.